fire drill. Bit of a bore, isn't it? Interrupts what you're doing. Still, you put up with it with good grace because you realise it's got to happen frequently so you'd know what to do in the case of a real fire. So you'd know what to do. Would you know what to do? It's all written down on this piece of paper. Fire drill. And this piece of paper is displayed throughout Kodak buildings for you to read on the notice board, at fire points, etc. But have you read it? Really read it, I mean. Could you tell me now what action you should take immediately if you discover a fire, or if you hear the fire alarm? You know, sometimes the fire officers here ask people what they would do if they discovered a fire, and they get some very funny answers. Mark you, it wouldn't be quite so funny if it was a real fire. So let's have a look at the fire drill instructions and see those familiar words which you may or may not remember turned into action. First point. If you discover a fire, immediately raise the alarm by operating the nearest fire alarm call point. Do you know where that is? Or indeed what it is or how to operate it? Or will you be running around in circles trying to find it or looking for someone to do the job for you? The shock of discovering a fire may make clear thinking difficult. You should just move instinctively to the fire alarm, knowing where it is and knowing how to operate it. Don't hesitate, even for a second. Consider the alternatives. A small fire that was brought under control and extinguished because immediate action was taken, or a small fire that grew and got out of control because precious seconds or minutes were wasted. So, break the glass. In some cases, that alone will be enough to operate the alarm. In others, you'll have to break the glass and press a button. Find out which type you have in your building. When you've operated the alarm, the other people in the building will hear this, or this, or this. You should all get to know which kind of alarm sounds in your building. And that brings us to the second point in the fire drill instructions. Try to extinguish the fire by using the nearest appropriate extinguisher, but do not take any personal risk. Where's the extinguisher? At the fire point and at other places in your building that you should know about. Which is the appropriate extinguisher? She's got it right. The fire she discovered was burning paper and furnishing material away from mains electricity. So she's using a water extinguisher, a red one. If she finds the extinguisher heavy, she doesn't have to hold it up, it works just as well on the ground. With the extinguisher she used, you remove the pin, squeeze the grip, hold the nozzle firmly, and aim the jet of water at the base of the flame nearest to you. Working the jet away from you removes the heat and the fire is out. The water extinguishers in your building may be of another type, where you strike a plunger like this. Or they may be a turnover type like this. Whatever the type, water extinguishers are always coloured red. Sometimes there is a water hose reel at the fire point, where clear instructions on how to use it are displayed. It may be an automatic hose reel, where the water supply is automatically switched on as the hose is unreeled. In that case, all you have to do to get a jet of water is to turn the nozzle. If there's a valve near the hose reel at the fire point, you'll have to turn it on to get water. And you'll have to do that before unreeling the hose. Otherwise, you'll have to run all the way back to the fire point and waste time at a critical moment. Make sure when you unreel the hose that it doesn't get snagged somewhere. Do you know what types of hose reel there are in your building? Find out today. Or what other types of fire extinguisher there are and why? Here's one. CO2, carbon dioxide, colored black. 
CO2 has the effect of suffocating the flames, of excluding the oxygen on which the flames depend. It makes a loud noise for which you should be prepared. But when it is applied to the front of the flames and driven across them, it puts them out. Electrical fires like this one are quite common and doubly hazardous. As you will realize, using water on an electrical fire can be disastrous as water conducts electricity. But CO2 doesn't. Get the nozzle as close to the burning appliance as possible for the maximum effect. Often you can put out a fire in an electrical or gas appliance by switching it off to remove the source of heat. But take care not to burn your hand. CO2 can be used for other types of fire, burning liquids for example. Water applied to some flammable liquids like oil can be useless, sometimes hazardous. So for flammable liquids, Extinguishers other than water must be used, and CO2 is one of them. The black CO2 cylinder can be used for all the types of fire that you're likely to come across at Kodak. By the way, did you spot the deliberate mistake? He should have sounded the alarm before tackling the fire. Foam is another way of attacking burning, flammable liquids. It forms a blanket which spreads over the surface of the liquid, stops it vaporizing and separates the liquid from the flames. It's particularly effective on hot liquids burning in containers because the foam can be directed at the back of the container so that it flows forward to cover the surface. Dry powder extinguishers can be used on burning flammable liquids, particularly when they've been spilled. A good method of using it is to attack the near edge of the flames and by sweeping from side to side, gradually drive the flames away from it. To sum up, and to help you remember, we've assembled here all the firefighting tools you are likely to come across at Kodak. Three types of water extinguishers and the hose reel you've already seen, all coloured red. CO2 extinguishers, black. Foam, cream. Dry powder, blue. In vehicles, you'll find another type of gas extinguisher, halon, green, to be used on electrical fires and flammable liquids. And in kitchens, you will find fire blankets to suffocate fires in chip pans and the like. One final word about fighting fires, and a very important one. Don't take any risks. If it's looking dodgy, don't be a hero. Discretion, not valor. Stay between the fire and your escape route. Don't get trapped. And close all doors behind you if you retreat. Closing doors reduces ventilation on which the fire may thrive. So, you've sounded the alarm, and help is on its way. But do you know where that help is coming from? The fire superintendent of your building is the key man when a fire occurs. Do you know who he is? You can find out by reading the fire drill. Do you know what his duties are? Again, read the fire drill. With the help of the fire wardens, know who they are? He will be supervising the fire drill and the evacuation. The fire superintendent must be given the location of the fire and he will make sure that the fire brigade are called. What do you do if you aren't concerned with the fire? When you hear the alarm, first switch off any equipment you may be using, whether it's electrical or gas operated. 
This will reduce the hazard to firefighters. Then leave the building immediately by the nearest available exit and go straight to your assembly area. And you all know where your assembly areas are, don't you? Because they are on the fire drill instructions. Suppose that the nearest exit is blocked. Almost without thinking, you should head for an alternative way out, another door, another staircase, which will take you to your assembly area. Some exit doors are fitted with security locks. Know how to use them. Don't stop to collect up your personal belongings. That may take too much time. And they're far less important than personal safety. Don't use the lifts. Think of the nightmare of a lift full of people stuck between floors in the middle of a fire. Close doors behind you. I've mentioned that before. And don't go back in the building until the fire superintendent tells you that you can. It's all there in the fire drill. Read it. Understand it. Make a note of the names and places written there. Take a look at your fire points, fire doors, hoses and extinguishers in your building. Walk your escape route. You may have to find your way out through smoke and it's not a time when you should have to think about which way to go. Most major fires take place out of working hours. I suppose that's obvious because during working hours there are people like you around who discover them in time and give the alarm. Operate the fire drill and prevent the terrible damage a fire can do to property, a company and the jobs of its employees. But if a fire takes place after you've left the building, it may well have been caused by some carelessness or lack of thought during the working day. So you must observe the company's fire regulations, like only smoking in prescribed areas. There are several outbreaks of fire at Kodak every year, all put out either by using extinguishers or by switching off equipment. We have to improve on that record and make very sure that it doesn't get worse. If you think about fire more, become more aware of it as a possibility, it may help you to become more alert to preventing it. What is fire, then? It's a combination of fuel, combustible material, rags, paper, flammable liquids, and so on, heat, cigarette ends, an electrical short circuit, a welding spark, and oxygen, which is all around us in the atmosphere. If one of these elements is missing, no fire. So we can prevent fires by never allowing heat and combustible materials to combine. And we can limit fires by reducing the amount of oxygen on which they feed. The main causes of fire are electrical equipment, cutting and welding, smoking materials, mechanical heat and sparks, space heating and maliciousness. The materials most commonly ignited are these industrial waste, electrical installation, textiles, flammable liquids, packing and wrapping materials. You can help to guard against fire by good housekeeping, good regular maintenance and safe storage. Here are a couple of examples, obvious ones, of fuel and heat being put together. Oily rags near a welding operator. A cigarette end carelessly thrown away. That is bad housekeeping. And bad housekeeping often leads to accidents and fires. These things are important. If something, say a chair, is smouldering away, perhaps in an empty room, when the door is open, it bursts into flames. Opening the door has allowed in oxygen to feed the heat. And that's what fire doors are for, to limit the amount of oxygen flowing towards the source of heat. They also perform two other vital functions. They prevent the spread of fire and they prevent the spread of smoke. Look at this fire door. 
it was at the business end of a fire. But look at the other side. So remember what it says in the fire drill. Close doors to prevent fire spread. It's especially important not to jam fire doors open or to leave pallets or crates to block them so they can't be closed. So, we're back to good housekeeping again. The object of that fire drill is your safety. To get everybody out of the building quickly and unharmed. So it's important that you read it and understand it. It's just as important that you understand what fire is, what it can do, how you can put it out, how you can prevent it. Before you leave work tonight, ask yourself, do you know the sound of your fire alarm? How to give the alarm? Where your nearest fire point is? How to use the firefighting equipment? Where your assembly area is? Which is your nearest escape route and its alternative? If not, find out now.